Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation, a quartic equation with complex numbers. We have z to the fourth power plus z cubed equals z squared minus z minus one. Did you recognize the expression on the right hand side? Is that a special form? What about the left hand side? Can we factor both sides so we get a common factor? Let's go ahead and find out. So first of all, I'm going to attempt to factor each side separately in hoping, I'm hoping that we'll get something in common. Left hand side, if you take out z cube, you're going to get z plus one. But on the right hand side, this is not really factorable unless you want to use radicals, which is not going to be very nice. So that's a quadratic. It's discriminant. It's not a perfect square. So it won't factor nicely. So what should we do then? We should put everything on the same side, right? When you can't do anything, try to set the whole thing equal to zero and hopefully you can deal with this quartic as a whole. Great, so let's go ahead and add everything on the right hand side, the opposite of everything on the right hand side, on the left hand side. So it's gonna be, in other words, subtract, we get the following, nice. Well, why is this nice? <laughs> Let me tell you. This is a symmetric equation. If you pay attention, and this, if you set this to be the center of this equation because there are five terms, it's in the middle. Uh, if you look at the two terms that are the same distance from the center, you'll notice that they have the same coefficients. I mean, I could have a three here and a three here, and this would still be satisfied. I don't have it, they both have one, and that's perfectly fine. That's okay. As long as they are the same, we have perfect symmetry. So this is a symmetrical equation, or is it a symmetric equation? Something like that, and it can be solved easily. Obviously, there's a couple different ways to solve it, and let me tell you something. Don't confuse this with this one, because this one is very different, even though that's also symmetrical. Uh, this one actually comes up with the nth roots of unity. Uh, you'll hopefully remember what I'm talking about. Or uh, if you had something like this, that's also different, right? Because the signs alternate. Again, I could turn this into something workable, but this one is entirely different because the minus sign only appears in the middle. Make sense? But it's still symmetrical. So here's how we're gonna handle it. I keep saying symmetrical, hopefully it doesn't turn out to be symmetric equation. So now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and use the quartic formula. No, not really. I don't recommend because that'll be quite complicated. You can do so if you want. You need to get rid of the z cube, so you probably replace z with w minus one over four, right? That'll do the trick. And the way I find it is look at the coefficient of z cubed and then divide it by the highest power, the degree, which is four and then negate, and then add a, attach in a variable, and that's gonna be your z. <laughs> Quite complicated, right? And obviously, uh, you, you'll end up solving a cubic at the end, so it's not, it's not gonna be nice at all. But you can do it, definitely, if you want, be my guest. Now, here's what we're gonna do instead. Let's go ahead and turn this into something nicer, and that can be done. Let me copy that one more time so I have room. I don't wanna erase those things, lazy, being lazy here. I want to divide everything by z squared. You know why? Because it'll help. With symmetric equations or symmetrical, whatever you want, to, you want to call it, dividing everything by the term in the middle or the variable with the power in the middle uh, is helpful. So let's divide everything by z squared, divide by z squared, divide by z squared, and divide by... I could also divide by a gigantic uh, fraction bar, but... I wanted to divide individually because I want you to see what is going on. This turns into z squared. This turns into z. This turns into one. Nice. This turns into one over z. Uh oh, I got a reciprocal. And this turns into one over z squared. This may not look nice to you at first glance, but let me tell you, this is actually really cool because you can bring these two together. Write it as z squared plus one over z squared. Isn't that nice? And then you could also bring these two together, right? And that'll give you z plus one over z, and minus one is gonna be left alone, I mean on the left-hand side. Okay, great. How do we proceed? Notice that z squared plus one over z squared can be written as 
z plus 1 over z quantity squared minus 2ab, which is 2z 1 over z. Okay? But the, those two terms cancel out, leaving us with a minus 2. You could also achieve the same result if you just took this and square it, and that would give you the same thing. But this one is a little better because we're going to be able to directly substitute it. Okay? So let's go ahead and replace this guy over here with this. Okay? That'll give us z plus 1 over z squared minus 2. Don't forget the 2 here. That's important. Plus z plus 1 over z minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. This is the power of substitution. Substitution is awesome. Don't you think? So we can go ahead and now replace z plus 1 over z with something. How about w? Since we use those commonly in this channel, that gives us w squared minus 2 plus w minus 1 equals 0. And finally, w squared plus w minus 3 equals 0. Yay! We got a quadratic equation. Nice. Let's go ahead and solve it, and now we're going to back substitute, okay? So how do you solve this quadratic equation? Using the quadratic formula, of course. We do have a formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. In other words, 1 plus 12, which is 13. That's a positive. So w is not, I was going to say, is not complex, but it's not true. W is complex, but it's also real. Anyways, W is real, so I can not remember the right term. So W can be written in two ways. There are two solutions. The critical part is back substitution. So we have to set it equal to Z plus 1 over Z. One thing you should know about Z plus 1 over Z, if Z is real, this number is either greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to negative 2. You know why? Because that's the maximum and minimum values for when Z is positive and z is negative. Anyways, so can this be equal to this? Well, how do we find out? Just by solving the quadratic formula, right? So again, from here, we're going to find the z values. And if, even if they're real, they're still considered complex. So we should be good, right? Now, if you don't want to do what I usually not want to do, set this equal to c because c is a constant, and just solve for c first, and then you can plug it in. Uh, let's multiply by z cz minus cz, remind me c's are solid, and then from here z becomes negative b or c plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, a is 1, c is 1, okay? And that is divided by 2, awesome. Now we know the value of c, so we can go ahead and plug it in, and when we plug it in, for example, look at this, you're going to square this number and subtract 4 from it. Do you think that's going to be positive? Let's find out. How do you square this number? 13 plus 1 minus 2 root 13 divided by 4 minus 4, and that'll be a 14, and then minus 16. 14 minus 6 is negative 2. Uh-oh, this can't be positive. So you know what that means? That means that you're going to have non-real solutions from here. Okay, I don't want to say complex because real numbers are also complex. So non-real solutions because the delta is less than zero. Makes sense? Let's just go ahead and do it for one of the values. Or maybe you can take it from here, but basically the whole idea is z is going to equal c, which is root 13 minus 1 over 2, plus minus the square root of c squared minus 4, which is this, by the way. And what I can do is, by the way, I could have simplified it, but anyways, times i divided by 2. And if you actually uh, simplify this or take out, it's totally up to you. And I could probably write it as follows, root 3, was it root 13 or root 3? I think it's root 13, yeah, not 3. Uh, root 13 minus 1 plus minus the square root of 2 plus 2 root 13i all over 4 because there's going to be a division by 2 twice and the other solutions should be similar. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.